or even out fishing. And we make that cast and catch that five pounder and we say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he didn't hear me. <laughs> I do have this on recording if you want to watch over it. God also shows himself through creation to, to human nature, which is known, general revelation. People can discover general revelation through the creation. When you look at the trees, you look at the seasons, that's God. Springtime comes, that's new life. Praise God. This spring, there is new life coming here, Seed Time Ministry. I believe that. We're going to get through this. Introduction to the Bible. Let's look at inspiration. Inspiration of the scriptures. How do we know? How do we really know that this is the word of God? You ever thought about that? Have you, Joe? How do we know this really is the written word of God? Bingo. 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 It is written. All those things you all quoted, it's written in the word. So you have a revelation of God's word. We all? What? That's it. He is the word. In the Bible, the inspiration is the idea of God guiding man to write the words down on paper. Powerful stuff. I think of Abraham and some of the men of old that God moved upon them to write this word. How did they write the word? How did they? Huh? Moses did. Yeah. Scrolls. With a pen. There's all kinds of scriptures that God speaks of how he moved upon men to write the word. Here's a good example. I'm standing here today showing the word. It is written because God wrote it in the heart, my heart, that no man can take. Is that powerful? Just like those men of old, God wrote that word in their heart. Then they wrote it on paper for us in the future. They didn't have the Bible in the Old Testament. They didn't even have it in the New Testament. They had Jesus. Huh? They had the living word with them. That's it. Good stuff. The Bible was inspired and written by men as God moved upon them to record his words, to preserve it for us today. Remember the scripture in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. The word of God. The Greek word, you mentioned this last week, the Greek word, Inspiration of the word of God literally means. The inspiration of God's word is. God breathed. How do we have the word in us? God breathed. We are created in his image. For his purpose. There's something in us 
God breathed into us to believe that there is a God. Amen? Yeah. There you go. That's called Romans 12, 1. Be you transformed, Maggie, by the renewing of your mind of what God's already put in you the day you received him. That's the revelation of the word. That's the starting point of any Christian, renewing the mind of God's word. Amen? Good, 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 good. I know what this word means, but I struggle pronouncing it. But I'm going to speak this word by faith. Let's look at compilation. Did I say it right? How the Bible was compiled. How it was gathered. How God moved upon men, human beings. To write the word. Men wrote the word of God. In 66 books. Just, Justin she's outside. Could you get her and tell her to get in here. God moved upon men. And that's how we have today. The 66 books. Of the Bible. Isn't that amazing? God used men. To write his word. On tablets. Can you imagine all these, these men of God writing these words down on a tablet, how it changed their life? Wow. To get a direct revelation of God and to start writing it down. Isn't that amazing? That's why I always, when I get a dream or a revelation from God or a vision or I hear that still voice speaking to me or I hear that audible voice of God, I write that down. Or if I have a dream, I used to write them all down on paper. Then I decided, I'm going to stop writing these down because that's, those are for me. That's for me personally. God revealing himself to me through the dreams and vision. Yeah. But you know what's better? If it's God, somewhere down the future... He's going to bring it back to your remembrance. Believe me, when God gives it to you, there's a reason for it. It's either to edify you, to encourage you, to build you up in your walk with God, and to minister to somebody, or reveal something to somebody, or speak to somebody when God has revealed to you by revelation of a dream. Lord, to warn you. Yeah. But above all that, give me the word. Because it's written. Everything I need is written in the word of God. Amen? Amen. But those dreams that you have and we receive from God, keep it in your heart. Because when we had our last meeting, God will bring back dreams that I had 35 years ago. That I thought I forgot. Just out of nowhere, boom. The Holy Spirit brings it back. Isn't that amazing? So all those things that you, God downloads into us through either a vision or a dream. It still has to come down to the word of God. Is it lining up to the word of God? Amen? Amen. I used to have dreams. Every day, like for three years. When I first got born again, I didn't know the word, but God was downloading the word to me through dreams. It's amazing. And I thought, I can't handle this. Then I started, then there was a shift. And I said, you know what? I love the dreams, but I love the word God more. So I started getting in the word of God and really studying the word and reading the word. Then the dream stopped for a while. I thought, Lord, what happened? You're not showing me any dreams. You leave me? You know what, you know what he was trying to teach me? Don't seek the dreams and don't seek the visions. Seek my word with all your heart. It is written. 
good stuff right there. I said that 50 times today because this is good. How was the 66th Bible, or the 60, how was the Bible completed? How did it become the 66th Bible that we have today? The Bible was composed of books written by different authors over time, varieties of places and conditions. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write the scriptures, which we call the Bible today. Amen. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is God-breathed. Do we believe the word of God? Or do we just know about the word of God? God wants us to know the word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the word to us where it becomes a revelation that transforms our life. Amen? It's changing me, brothers and sisters. If I wasn't sharing the word, I'd be over on that couch right now travailing in the spirit, thanking God for the word. Preservation. We'll be looking at the Bible, how God has preserved and the preservation of his word. It's powerful stuff. This is just an introduction to what I'm going to go into teaching in the next three or four weeks in the teaching. Okay? This is just the introduction. Today was the main teaching was about revelation, and the next one is about revelation. There's three series parts about the revelation of God. Then we're going to go into the inspiration of God, um, how God preserves his word from the beginning of time. Amen? We'll look at the Bible has been preserved and the preservation of scriptures. How do we know that the Bible in front of us is the word, written word of God? I got some scriptures. Preservation in regards to the scriptures mean that the Lord has kept his word intact as to its original meaning. Preservation simply means that we can trust the scriptures. Amen. Amen. When I read the word, I allow the Holy Spirit to speak to me through the word. Then that word becomes life. No one can take that from me. When God reveals the word to you, how many of you have opened your Bible and read one scripture and all of a sudden that, that scripture just jumped off the page and become life? I could tell you one. In my life, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. It saved my life. Where it says, Jesus took my sickness by his stripes. I am healed. It literally saved my life from death. Do I believe the word works? We all have a testimony of the written word of God in our lives. In one way or another. It's written. Amen? I like that little Bible. I know somebody, a, a minister of God. <laughs> I'm a Sugway. I know a guy that carries his Bible in his back pocket. Okay? He doesn't make notes because it's written in his heart because he's walked with God for 55 years in the Word of God. Oh, man, sometimes I feel like I'm so inadequate of God's word, but my heart's for God. See, that's what God's after, really, your heart. King David was a God. He was after God's own heart. See, he see his heart. He didn't see all the imperfections in his life. He, was, he seen the heart. Amen? 
I need to move on here. How do we know the Bible is the written word of God? I'm going to read some things here to you. The Bible is the written word of God because God inspired authors. The Bible is God's direct communication to human beings through inspired authors. Isn't that amazing? When we speak the word of God, that's inspired. That's God breathed. He's speaking through us to people. It may be one word in a 20 or 30 words you speak to someone. Like this man here was here today. There was an impartation. I know it. That's the goodness of God. I know it. I know it. I know it. You watch and see. That's the assurance and the confidence that I have in my God. Not in my own ability. My confidence is in him and what his word says. You know, when I, we can touch people and their lives can change just like that. The power of the Holy Spirit has begun a work. And when he begins a work, when God begins a work, he's going to finish it. That's me. That's you. That's every one of us. Hallelujah. <sighs> Yummy. Yummy. <laughs> really? This is God breathed word. I'm not trying to appeal to no one's emotions. This God-breathed word, he's trying to communicate the importance to us. The need for the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want to be one of those people. I've been it. I've done it. I went to church from 15 years old to age 30. Uh, sat there every Sunday never opened my Bible never read the word of God but I said to myself I'm going to heaven wait a minute how can that be I was a pew setter God doesn't want pew setters he wants to make disciples of us all to go into all the world preaching and teaching this gospel and making disciples, not converts. We go to any church anywhere and you'll see converts. But I have to believe God's grace. If they believe on Jesus Christ, I still have to believe those people sitting there, God's grace is on their life too. I have to believe that God ain't going to just walk away from them. I believe that which he begun in them, even those who are just sitting there getting one foot into the kingdom of God. I don't want to just get one foot into the kingdom of God. I want a triumph entry. When I get to heaven, I want to say, I knew you, Jesus. I knew you. And he's going to look at me and say, I knew you too. Isn't that powerful? That's his heart and his love for us and his people. I don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience heaven. We mentioned the Lord's Prayer. I don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience. Heaven's right in us. That's awesome. The Bible says where God is, we shall be also. Wherever he is, I am. I believe that. In the spirit. Amen? Amen. I know I got off on that, but I have to get a straight. God doesn't want us to be pew setters.
need to have a hunger for the Word of God. You know that hunger that 